Hey everyone, Satana here. So you guys already probably saw my Uder Time Kench deck. Uh, I'm here to bring you the other side of the story, right? So obviously Time Kench found a new partner with Uder, and the, and Soraka needed someone else as well. And what we got to is gonna be Soraka Galio. You heard that right. So instead of playing Star Spring with Bilgewater, we are now we're gonna play Star Spring with Demacia and taking advantage of the formidable units because of how much high health they can have and how they need to be blocked for the opponent not to take that much damage, right? Um, and there's a couple of tool here, tools here that were introduced that allows our units allow our units to survive a lot. So this is my version of the deck. So right, right off the bat, I'm pr probably first gonna go over the formidable units. So we're kind of running the full package here. We're gonna triple Pratishize Hound, triple Broadwing, which is the key card of this deck. The Broadwing kind of replaces what the Boxopus would do on the Bilgewater version. Just because he can get so big so quickly, he's actually a little bit better than, than the Boxopus because you can buff him up to like seven, eight health and be able to hit, kill like eight health units, right? Something that the Boxopus couldn't do before. Uh, we also run in the Duran Prodigy. I think this card is so good in this deck. If you can pair that up with the Broadway or with the Petrocise Sound, it can do a lot of damage. I like the three Mountain Drakes because the Mountain Drakes can also present, present a lot of damage. And he's always getting blocked, getting him two more health, two more health. So it's, it's kind of like a passive grant, which you like because of your spells being able to heal, it, especially when it's a war. And then we do play only two of Galio. I think three of Galio can be a little bit too much because how expensive it is. So sometimes you don't want to see, you usually don't want to see two of them in your hand at once, but you usually do want to see at least one in a game because it can be a big way to finish the game, especially when you don't draw the star spring. It puts a lot of pressure on the opponent because of uh, they need to they need to be able to react to Galio because of the infinite rallies. Then all the cards that we run from the Massey are going to be our single combats. To be able to get rid of opponent's units while damaging our own units. Shiva Duran is such a good card as well in this type of deck because it gets you pretty much five health, right? Grant five health. And if you pair that up with one of your formidable units, they can become very powerful very quickly. And Winds of War is the last one. It's, an, it's kind of like another single combat, but it's a slow, cost one more. But the difference here is that it heals the unit, which means that it advances the Soraka level up and also advances the Star Spawn. Uh, so yeah, so those are the tools that we get from the Master, which are pretty much all the new cards from the formidable package, right? Except for single combat. And then from the target side, so we do one gifts from beyond. Like I said, the Broadwing tends to be kind of the key card of our deck. And this kind of gives us the option to be able to pull the Broadwing since it's our only two drop in the deck. Or, you know, sometimes it's pretty good to be able to do a stun if you need to delay your win condition. If you need to delay the opponent's win condition for one turn. Obviously, triple guiding touch is, is a, you know, really straightforward answer here it gives you the draw as well as letting you heal your formidable units for them to be able to do more damage to the opponent triple star spring the whole point of this deck is to be able to win with star spring or galio right so a star spring is one of your win conditions galio is the other second win condition and this gets us there especially because he synergizes really well with the formidable units uh, because he can heal them back up for them to have good attack uh, good good health to be able to attack the opponent I like two Sunblast bigger. Uh, one thing that I noticed in this deck is that I really, like, I don't have stuff like Pell Cascade here, right? I guess I could run it, but I think Pell Cascade is a little bit awkward because you only get plus one, plus one, and, and affirmative units don't take advantage of the plus one attack. Sunblast bigger lets them pretty much gives them two attacks. So uh, Sunblast bigger becomes a two mana, two plus two plus two pretty much, which I think can be very powerful for how cheap it is. Uh, obviously, Triple Soraka, the funny thing about Soraka is that actually sometimes you might not want to keep her in the mulligan because of how hard she can be to level up in this type of deck. Uh, but she still does the same job as the previous deck. Protection becomes pretty much a plus four, plus four for four mana, as well as being able to heal your unit. So you could actually potentially have the option of recovering more. And lastly, I do like Triple Barbara Protector. I've seen people cut this from this list. I think that's absolutely wrong. Triple Barbara Protector is how you win against Aggro. Because uh, if you can put two Barbara Protectors on the field and stabilize, Agro will never be able to beat you. Or even just one can slow them down enough for you to set up the rest of your game plan. Uh, but yeah, this is a really fun deck that I've really been liking, this version of Star Spring. Uh, one last thing I wanted to mention before we move on to the, game, to the games is a funny interaction between Barbara Protector and Galio. So if you have a level up Galio in the field and your Nexus is damaged, the Barbara Protector will trigger the Rally right away 
on the, at the start of the turn. So let's say, you know, it's the opponent's attack turn. Because your Burp Protect is healing your Nexus, it's damaging, it's damaging its, itself. So then the Galio gets triggered. So right away, you have a Burst Speed Rally on the opponent's attack turn. So it's a little neat interaction. Well, anyways, enough rambling from me. Uh, you know, you guys know I love Soraka, I love Star Spring. So you, I hope you enjoyed this deck and enjoy the game. The game's coming up soon. I'll see you all at the end of the video. Have a good one. In this matchup, we'll be going up against Bandle Tree. Um, you just gotta hope that they don't run Scorch Earth, right? Either if they, if this Bandle Tree person is running Scorch Earth, then we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Robert Protector doesn't sound bad because usually they try to aggro us down, but I think their hand is a little bit too heavy. So I think we have to try to see if we can get the Broadwing, and we do. So we get the Broadwing, and we also get the Shield of the Run, and we even get Soraka. So this hand is looking a lot nicer now. Um, trying to think how I want to do this because I don't want to lose this. I don't want to summon this and then have house spiders or telescope, and then us losing the petrified problem for free. So I think I'm okay doing it like this, and then just doing Shilo Duran that's there, because he doesn't have access to the Buster Shot yet. It does not have it yet. That's good. That's good for us. Um. Ooh. I like the shield of the run here, pre-committing it, just to make sure that we go high enough health next turn. So that we can kill the Bandle City Mayor and not have to worry about Flock being a thing, right? And now we have a counter against the Flock as well. So even if he has the Flock, that's alright. Because now we have the Guiding Touch. He could also get the Equinox from one of the two telescopes. The fact that he didn't do it last turn means that he probably didn't get it. Alright, so that's that's one of the cards out of the way. We get to heal up a little bit here. We could potentially do the second. I can summon a set a second Broadwin right here. Okay, so he doesn't have it. Uh, let's just do Soraka, I guess. Yeah, he's just gonna go for his win condition, unfortunately. Ah! So he decides to do it like this, which is telling me that he probably has Flock, right? And if he has Flock, I think I'm willing to take that damage and just do it like this. Because we want to be able to use... We want to be used, able to use the Guiding Touch on the... On the Soraka instead of doing it on the Patricide Broadway. So I'm going to keep this at 5 health. Soraka levels up here until, unless he goes after the Soraka. Just to go after Soraka, we can do the Guiding Touch. Yeah, there we go. So that's why they didn't want to put the Broadwin into 4 HP range, because then he was going to die. I guess he could technically have Group Shot and another Flock, and that would punish this play. But I very much doubt that he has both. I think I got to pass instead of trying to summon the second Broadwin. Now, he really used both cards that I got from Telescope. So I think it's fine for us to summon the second Broadwin now. And I think it's better to do this, because that way we can start dragging his stuff out. Okay, so he gets the Buster Shot out of there. We can still do this and summon the third Broadwin. Still, still have enough mana for single combat. Problem again is going to be, does he have the second Flock, right? Because second Flock will make, will make us dragging that, a really punishing move. So I think it's actually better to do it like this. Galio's huge. Come on. I hate that the Oracle Ice thing is here. So I'm playing around a second flock. Which may not be correct. But I think it's fine doing it this way. And then next time we summon the Galio. Pokey stick. Okay. I, 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 I'll let go of the second brown one. I guess Soraka dies to a second flock anyways, huh? Oh, your second buster shot, alright. Um... Sure. Let's do the second star spin, we have nothing else to do. We pass Soraka there, we do want to be able to keep this sealed up. This protects us against the first coach Earth. We can do Galio next turn. Now we have Wings of War as well. Wonder if it's better to just single combat this 
Because this is going to take us to 18 plus 6. It's not going to be enough, right? 16 is going to be 24. I like the idea of just doing the mayor right here. Not like he matters. The value that he's going to get from mayor is not going to matter anymore. But this advances the level of condition here. We can do the mountain drake. And start putting some damage this way next turn. He's only used one flock. But he's used all three buster shots. Okay. Uh, we're just going to summon Galio first, I think. So that we just get the value from Galio being on the field. Or we can do the broadback protector now. I think broadback is probably better, actually. Because Galio is still not going to level up. Right? Broadback means that we're healing our own... Uh, we're, we're healing our Nexus while also being able to advance our Star Spring Wind Condition. He gets the tree, which is still pretty far away. Yeah, so we can do this here. And if he summons anything, we have Winds of War to back it up. He's only at four, right? Actually, he, he lowered pretty bad here, right? Only being at four. He needs to be worried about Star Spring potentially winning the game. And then Galio level some next turn, allowing us to be able to do the rally. He get, he's going to go like this, because what he's going to go for is going to be the... Uh, He's going to try to go for the... Uh, so what he's going to do is that he's going to try to go for the uh, Minimorph on the Galio. Which is fine. I respect it. We'll go ahead and get our heal here from the from the practice sites. And see what he does. We can obviously kill that now anytime we want. Galio is still level sub, so he needs to Minimorph the Galio on the open attack. Which means he has to spend 6 mana on just minimorphing Galio. Because if he doesn't minimorph the Galio... Oh, I guess, actually, he doesn't need to. Because the Broadwind gave us, like, the burst speed... Uh, the the Broadwind already gave us the burst speed thing. So, I think it's actually better for us not to drag Nar. I think it's better for us to drag it like this. Just so that we are able to heal up here. And not die to the second flock. Because he hasn't done the second flock yet. I think it's fine to do it like this. I think at this point we can win with Star Spring. Yeah. Yeah, that's the mini morph that we talked about. I don't want that I don't want this one to die to second flock. I think we're gonna need the Broadwing to be able to win. Okay, Scorch Earth is pretty annoying, but it means that he's not He's not doing it on the Star Spring, right? Which is good for us. He's still five away. I guess now he's four away. This guy's gonna heal up. 19. And he's actually gonna get to 20. He's not gonna get to 22. Well, it is because this guy's still damaged. So he has one more turn. A Star Spring wins at run end. His Star Spring wins at run start. He decided to damage our Nexus too, which means that now he's even one less thing. He also is about to die, so he needs to block. He just needs to deal with the second Star Spring, the first Star Spring, though, and then he doesn't lose. He's close to dying, so he has to block this two guys no matter what. Right? Yeah, because he's, he's about to die right here. I like forcing the blocks. I like forcing the blocks. Um, I think this is fine. Because he's still three away from this, so forcing the blocks means that this guy can also start healing up, right? He needs to have a second Scorched Earth to prevent us from winning this turn. So the reason that I like the blocks is because no matter if he has like... If he can kill this guy, it won't matter. Yeah, that's him. GG's. Woo. So we ended up winning with Star Spring in this game. That's pretty good. Um... We got lucky, though, that he kind of lowered a little bit with his units. It's good. He ended up having a lot of removal, right? He had all three buster shots, had a mini morph, had one flock. So he ended up not getting his units, and we were able to kind of hit the uh, hit the, the mayors as soon as they can damage. Yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against scouts so i tend to do okay versus scouts because we'll be able to have like the broadway perfect protector sorry the broadway protector broadway is pretty good as well because we have the prodigy and we have wins of war to to to, uh, to chat to single combat well to strike like a misfortune right 
So I'm actually going to greet out and keep this all hand. Now, if we had a Star Spring or a Soraka, this would be even better. But I think the, the MVP of this match is going to be the Broadwin and the Prodigy being able to give it tough. Because she also becomes a pretty good blocker against most of his units. Alright, now... You probably don't want to put any damage on the Broadwin until we're able to give it tough, right? So even if he... Even if he does, even if he summons something next turn, I probably don't want to drag it. Although I guess because we had the Winter War, it's okay to do it because we're gonna heal. We're gonna heal to pull and then damage. Which I had that last turn. I think I would have taken that block if I had that last turn. Yeah. So here he decided to go like this, which is fine. Again, I was I, I was thinking that it wasn't good to attack anyways. And now what we can do here is with Lauren Prodigy. There you go. And now this becomes a really bad attack for him. Because, okay, if he attacks, I mean, he's just losing his units, right? This still stays at 3, meaning that we can still try to go after the Misfortune. Although, I don't think it's actually smart to go after the Misfortune, because it's very likely that he's going to have a Sharp Sight or a Rainier's Resolve, right? But this plays around that now. So, this only loses to double Sharp Sight. So, maybe what we need to do is do the Petricide's Hound first. If he, if he taps out a double sharp side, then we can commit the shield of the ramp. And he does. So there we go. We're just going to kill this girl. And that's one misfortune down. Because a single sharp side is not enough. And now we can do the Lauren Prodigy on the Petricide Hound. To be able to give this Hound the tough as well. And now we even have single combat. So, so here we go. So this becomes a really great blocker and attacker into most of his stuff. Yeah, he's going to get this for free. Decides to go like this instead. Why? There's two ways we can do this. We can block here to prevent any damage. Or we can just do this. We can also just single combat right here. But if he has the sharp side, that puts it at 5. So we go down to what? to two and we still don't die i think this is fine if he has the sharp side we're gonna be sacrificing our broad win there it is because now what he can do is that he can drag the broad win with the fleet for the tracker but he's gonna be sacrificing literally oh actually so that that was a misplay because this survives we have the winter warder right i didn't calculate that enough i forgot that the sharp side will put her above range so that was actually a misplay on our part. So now we need to get a second broad win. And that was a big broad win that we got. Oh, actually, that probably lost us the game, to be honest. So that actually is going to lose us the game. Because now this queen is going to be still on the field. She can potentially probably level up. We can try to kill her with the Winds of War. We're going to be able to heal up at least. Yeah, so we need to kill her. Obviously, we need to kill her. Uh... This allows us to do this and save and still have our unit. We have a second Winter Ward to be able to attack on the uh, Misfortune. He's going to be able to drag the Broadback Protector. We have the Shield of Duran. Yeah, he's going to be able to just drag the... the he's going to be able to dra drag the Protector. If he drags the Precise Hound, it's probably actually better for him, to be honest. He needs to drag the Petricide Hound, I think. Okay. So that's that's really annoying. What we'll be able to do next turn, though, is that we'll be able to kill the Citra because of the Pet the Porridge having a lot of uh, a lot of attack. Because she's gonna be able to heal to full here. And kill this. And then we have another Winds of War. I want to be able to get rid of the Citra because he has Challenger. We also have to be scared of it for the Mass here, right? Right? Because any fearsome means that we can't do anything here. All right, let's get to work. I don't think I care about this. We'll we'll have to sacrifice this net stone when he commits. We need to kill this right now before we can do the for the Mass here. So the problem he has, we have no cards. He has one card plus for the Masia, and the for the Masia is going to be a huge hit towards us. We need, we need to get. 
So we, we, we would have needed to get a Galio at this point. Right? We can put we can kill the we can kill the fleet feather. Another obstacle. Okay. We can kill this guy. Or should we kill this girl? Because the problem with leaving the fleet feather alive is that he'll be able to pull later on, right? So he'll be able to pull our blocker away. I think I don't care about the health that he's getting from the sculpture anymore. If he has the rally, that's a little bit annoying because then we have to sacrifice. Yeah, there we go. Because that's going to be 11. We can do this. Play Soraka. Soraka gives us a great blocker. He's also leveled up. So now we don't have to actually block the sculpture. We can just block the Banger Surgeon. And then next time we start drawing one, at a, one time at a turn. Okay, so a big misplay of sacrificing the Broadwing ended up not changing the game. Well, I guess it did change the game, right? It made it a lot more difficult for us. But we should be able to bounce back now, right? Because we can heal this to full. He needs to he needs to protect. He needs to defend this because it's going to be a lot of damage. And now we also have the Mountain Drake, right? He's going to decide to take the 8 damage. We have enough blockers that we don't care about. Okay, that's why he did it. He did it that way because he's going to have it for the Masia. But our units have high enough health that the Forty Masia shouldn't make a difference. And now we also have single combat. So if he has something like this that allows him to... Huh. So let's see how we play this out. Obviously, the problem here is going to be the Forty Masia. We do have ways to protect ourselves. Let's have him committed first before we do the single combat. So we'll do the single combat on this girl. We still stay at six. If he attacks with the Fallen Feline, he's just going to die to the Mountain Drake. So he needs to attack with everything here. And even attacking with everything is not enough for Leto. Because we're able to heal up everything. He decides to go like this. So we're able to just kill it. And then we can do the Astro Protection. Uh, I, I don't, he, he didn't need to do the Scout Attack. Because if, if he didn't do the Scout Attack, he actually had a chance. Because here we just win now. Yeah. I think this scout attack was a little bit greedy for him. I mean, a single... Uh, he, we both kind of top deck really good cards, though, right? He top decked the Island Navigator, which is so good with the Fort Demacia. And we ended up top decking the single combat, which allowed us to combat it. But that was actually a really bad game that we shouldn't have won because of the misplay with uh, the Broadwood. I didn't do the map correctly in my head that the sharp side meant that the Queen was going to live. So... That single combat that we did in the problem was actually bad. We could have just taken that damage from Quinn and tried to kill her another and tried to kill her by pulling her next turn. Yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Fizz Riven. So this is probably the swim deck that I seen kind of popping around. Uh the whole the whole thing that it does is that you're able to kind of get like a like a big elusive double strike attack with a papercraft dragon. And also have Riven to back it up and stuff. It's a little bit interesting because we do want to get the brow win. I think we need the brow win protector. I mean the, the uh not the yeah the brow win the dragon thing right the petrocytes brow win. I keep confusing brow back with that with petrocytes brow win. This hand doesn't look bad to be honest. I'm gonna regret kicking out the shield of Duran is what I'm thinking. Yeah, there you go. Now I wish I had the shield of Duran, but there's also a chance that if I didn't mulligan everything, I wouldn't have gotten. The petrocytes brown one, right? So I probably didn't need to mulligan everything. So this is a little bit annoying, obviously, because he, he's just trying to do spells so he can level up this. Okay, we ended up getting the shield of the run anyways. I'm okay taking this block. No reason to take any damage. We'll do the brown win, and then we have the shield of the run next turn to be able to either percent a lot of damage or force him to, you know, be able to kill the blocker. So again, this deck is relying on like a big combo turn, right? So, if he gets like his big combo turn, then yeah, that's a problem. I'm gonna do this first. I'm gonna have him commit something. Okay, he didn't commit anything. I was gonna say, I'm gonna have him commit something before we do the Shield of Duran. And so, not mattering because he ends up doing, you know, he ends up just blocking anyways. I wanted him to try to see if he could kill our problem with the, with the Faded before we committed the thing. But again, ended up not mattering. So, that is gonna present a little bit of a problem for him. He 
he has to have something, right? If he's attacking like this, that tells me that he probably has... Like, he probably has a way to be able to uh, kill our Broadwind. I can't remember what his deck runs, right? So that's the problem that I have, that I don't remember exactly what the deck runs. We can heal up that damage, so that's why I'm not too concerned. Why do we use the Star Spring first before we commit the Broadwind? Because my concern is that if we try to kill that Riven, he's going to have a buff. So I actually think it's incorrect to try to kill her. I think it's better to save to, to kind of start building up for our big Galio. He only has two Blade Fragments. He doesn't have three yet. We have the Mountain Drag, we have the Petrocise Hand, and then next time we can do the Galio. Okay, the double, the double attack is kind of annoying. Because now he can get the Overwhelm. We can still kill it. Yeah, that's the Overwhelm. So that's why we didn't do it last turn, right? Does he have anything for one health that can give him... Sorry, for one that could give him that attack? If we take this, we go to four. If we do this, he dies and we protect our damage. I'm trying to remember if there's anything for one mana that he could have that can give him health. In Natsu's Bandle City? I don't think there is, right? There we go. So then here we can do the Hound, and we can do Galio, and Galio's gonna be leveling up, right? It makes a Broadwin really impossible for him to deal with. He needs to start defending, because otherwise he's gonna start dying. And we're dealing a lot of damage with everything that we have. Because this is dealing 5, this is dealing 8, that's 13. Okay, so he ends up, he ends up kind of getting that stuff there. Uh, sure, we'll drag it like this. Um... Because we can get the rally next turn, right? The only problem here is that we might have just opened ourselves up to like uh We might have opened ourselves up, there we go, to a fist overwhelm. Because he's going to have the papercraft dragon on the fist. And we don't have a way to commit the lethal right away. So he's going to do the papercraft dragon and he'll be able to give it like a loose... I mean, he'll be able to give it overwhelm or buff it up, right? Actually... We might have just lost. We might have just lost. Because we have no way to damage. We needed to actually not attack that turn. We needed to wait. Yeah, because now he can just buff this up. If he has enough buffs, he can just 20 to zero us, right? So that's 5. I mean, sorry, that's 12. He's looking for it. He needs to have an Elixir Wrath. And like a might. I don't think he can get there now, right? Ooh, actually, maybe. If he has the Elixir of Wrath. So again, Elixir of Wrath kills us here. Elixir of Wrath is the only thing that can, that can kill us here. I guess he could have a... Uh, he could have the Riven spell. Doesn't have it. Wait. Aren't we okay then? Because we can win next turn. Oh my goodness. Okay. We heal. Does he have the da one damage pain? We heal three. So we're at four. We kill the fist. And in the process. Actually we lost our rally. That's the problem we brought when that we lose that we lose the rally from the uh, from the Galio. But we have a pretty big attack here, right? So we have a big enough attack. We can heal for four. Wow, that was close. So we got lucky that he ended up not having the Elixir Wrath. I think actually, if, if maybe if he saved the Might that he spent on Riven earlier, he had a chance. But he ended up getting greedy and not playing around us having single combat. But yeah, GG's. And there you go, back to Black 2. <laughs> so in this match, we'll be going up against Anivia. Now, historically, Star Spring does well versus Anivia. But that's when we were able to damage our own units. The fact that we're not able to damage our own units might make this a little bit more difficult. So let's see if we can get a Star Spring early. I think we still need a Star Spring early, right? Like, there's no way that you win this matchup without a Star Spring early. And we have a pretty good curve with the Broadwind, Bigger, and Star Spring, allowing us to kind of get a lot of value early on. 
think Broadway right now is fine. It's better than doing it next turn, because next turn he's going to have access to the box, right? So here we can do the Star Spin first. I want him to develop something that I can drag. If he doesn't develop anything, I think it's actually okay to pass. But I think I'm going to go for the attack. Maybe we can put some pressure on him. In terms of health. Hmm, he's going to ramp. Okay, so this is more like a ramp deck. Interesting. Like a ramp and Nivea version, I guess. And he decides to go that way. Okay, we can do the Brawl Up attack. There. I think th this is a very awkward hand for... Like I said, our problem here is going to be that we have no way to... Uh, we really don't have a way to, like, ramp up, right? So, here he could have, like, Ruination, which I think I'm okay with. If he has Ruination, I think I'm okay with that. He could just summon the Anivia right now while he has 6 mana. Ruination kind of hurts us a little bit, right? Because he's killing our Broadwin. But it's not the end of the world, as we just talked about. Um... So we can kill this guy. I don't think the Warden Stones matters anymore. We could bait him into... We could also just kill the Anivia. But then that's just giving him an Anivia that's going to be dead. Because we could do the Shield of Duran. To kill the Anivia. That makes it a little bit awkward for him. He would need to have the second Anivia. I think he's fine like this. He can never attack with Anivia, right? Because that's his problem, that he can never attack with Anivia. As long as we have... Hmm. He can never attack with Anivia. As long as we have the Star Spring. If he, if he attacks with Anivia, it's just helping us out. Right? Okay, he's gonna just Glimpse. I guess that's a way to prevent us from getting the value from this. Uh, Galio is going to allow us to present a lot of damage next to The problem again is going to be like Vengeance or Balthus being able to deal with the Galio. This is a very aqua hand here. Yeah, he's going to just fully ramp, huh? Very aqua hand. Because now next turn he's going to be a 9 mana. If we summon Galio and he has like a ruination, that's a problem. I guess we'll do this. We have no other, we, we have no other place, right? At least we let at least we mana efficient. We can summon Galio. He has 12 mana, so he could easily have like ruination or anything else. The good thing is that every time that a Navy attacks, he's gonna like. This delays him for one turn, right? I guess this delays him for one turn. It takes the mana out of the out of the equation that he needs to be worried about. He can just vengeance this though. Just glimpse. So Galio still levels up, giving us access to the rally, which is one a great a great way to deal with the. It's a great way to deal with the with the uh, with the Shadow Owl failure decks. He still gets the full ramp, which is cool. And maybe a level sub we get rid of the spell shield from Galio, but he's able to trigger the rally. Starspin is still a zero, right? So like Starspin is really far away. We haven't killed an Anivia yet, so if he has Rekindle or anything like that, it's, it's not great for him. He's gonna glimpse. So he's gonna glimpse so that he could, I guess, summon. It were okay passing. I don't wanna overdevelop. I don't wanna overdevelop and have my stuff die. Because he could easily have ruination here plus biofis. There we go. So this is gonna be his ruination turn. Where he's gonna ruinate our whole board, sacrificing his own Nibia with it. Yep, he didn't care about killing Anivia because he knew that he could just pick her right back. Now what we have to just do is hope that we get another Galio or something in the future. Because without the Rally, I don't see how we win. That's the problem that I was talking about, right? Because we're not able to damage our own units, so he was able to deny any damage that we did. 
by just doing the uh, by just doing the glimpses on his own units. So it made it really difficult for us to ever do anything. If he has a second ruination, we just lose. So I'm, I'm not gonna play around it. I think I'm just gonna do it like this. We could push another four damage by doing the ash to protection. I don't see how we win this anymore. That's my problem. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. I think the only way that we win this is gonna be through putting pressure on him. Actually, this is this was lethal, wasn't it? Oh, that's lethal now. He got greedy. He got so greedy. Wow, we actually pushed through. <laughs> he got so greedy doing this. He shouldn't have anything at one mana. Wow. Wow. He actually got super greedy there. I think our Astro Protection might have baited him. Because the thing is that if I committed everything at first, he could always freeze the 3-2 to prevent the lethal. But yeah, GG's. Wow. That was crazy. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Nar Frelia. I mean, Nar Frondel. And this is probably the timeline deck that Frondel will kind of popularize. I like the Soraka because I feel like there's going to be a lot of... So, so the problem with this deck is that he's going to be able to do like... Ooh, this is risky. I think we need to get the Star Spring because the way that this deck wins, or at least when I have faced it, he's able to do the nine, the nine mana spell there. Very nice to clear your whole board and then set up a great attack. Because what they'll do is that they'll have the uh, eight that stairs prep and ready to go to be able to kill you. Now here he's always gonna have a two drop. That's cool. Um, we can do the second hound. And we can then do the Prodigy on one of the Hounds. I hate doing the Prodigy on something that's not a broad win. But I don't think we have a choice at this point. Because we have to try to kill him before he can get to that big combo turn, right? So we can do this. The problem is that we don't have Star Spring. We kicked out our Soraka, which I think... Kicking out Soraka is fine, because it's very tough for Soraka to level up in this deck. You need to pretty much have Starsman for it to level up. Now, he discarded a Trollshan, which is smart because Trollshan is not going to do anything against the formidable units. You still have a second one, though, right? Uh, sure. Don't think it's worth it to sacrifice our second town this early. Because we do have the Chilo Duran. And we have the heals and stuff. I think the only way that we can win this is through kind of... Um, going over the top against him so this is a great draw i'm trying to think what punishes us i think i'm better off doing the shield duran and giving us access to guiding touch as we need to and then next time we do the mountain drake Again, burying ice becomes really scary. Burying ice into it that stairs clears our whole board, and we have a really kind of low value board, uh, board right now. They didn't see her, can give him access to a lot of great cards from PNC and failure that we need to be worried about. I might be out playing myself, but playing around very nice. Yep, there we go. That's why I didn't want to commit the Duran Prodigy, because I figured he could have some way to, like, kill our unit. So I wanted to have enough, enough mana to be able to do the Guiding Touch. Now we get Soraka as well. I wonder if I should just play on Curve and just play Drake, Soraka, Duran Prodigy. If he keeps three mana, then that's maybe a misplay, because, misplay, again, he can do very nice. Okay, so one of the dragons is gone. I think that's okay with me. Okay, so he tapped out of enough mana next turn to be able to do that play. So I think I'm fine doing the dragon. And then next turn was Soraka. I think Soraka is fine. Get this back up to a decent amount of health. 
Uh, we might even want to keep mana for single combat here, depending on what he does. I think we actually shouldn't play the second product yet until we're sure that he might not have something like fancy. I'm gonna do this. If he has Mystic Shot, he can kill this. Doesn't. Uh, hmm. Question here is Do we heal this guy or do we heal this guy? I think I'm okay doing this, right? Because if he, whatever he blocks there, you can do it like this too, though. Ah, oh, sorry. Like this. Because he, he has to block this, right? He has to block this because that's going to be a damage. So it gives us the Fury proc. This guy goes down to two, which is a little bit annoying, but we do have the Astro Protection to potentially save it. He, he's, he's losing a lot of his units, but again, I'm very scared of the ice, of the burying ice into the it that stairs. And he has enough mana to do burying ice right now and then do it that stairs next turn. Doesn't do it. Okay. So now we can just play the Broadwind, right? And then be able to drag the blocker. And then we just win if he doesn't have a, another unit. Okay, so here we're going to set so, com commit the second block, the second challenger unit. Because again, our units are big enough that we can push lethal damage. If he doesn't have, I guess, yeah. Because we can heal this back up. We could have also just killed the blockers, but I think it's better to just get the unit. He can kill this guy. Oh no, he's gonna kill one of the one of them. Alright. I respect it. I respect it. This is a lot of commitment. That's that's a lot of commitment that we're gonna have to do. I don't think it's right to do the hound, because even if we do the hound, we still don't have enough lethal damage. Oh, maybe we should have done the Hound now. Now, now, now that we had the Shield run, we could have potentially gotten the lethal damage there. If we went for the Hound. Because, yeah, we were going to heal this up, right? So we did potentially have lethal damage if we went for the Hound. Because that would have been another 2, that would have been another 3. I guess it still wouldn't have been enough. Yeah, I guess it still wouldn't have been enough. So we just got to play it slow. And if he has... He doesn't have enough mana to do Burying Ice plus the... Um, it that stairs. So we still have a decent win condition. The problem is that we don't have Star Spring, we don't have Galio yet. If we had Galio in this game, this would already been over. Because we got play Galio. And then just kill. He also didn't get a timeline, so that's pretty good for us. I think we just play around the very nice now. This that's the it that stairs. So he decided to do the it that stairs now without the combo. Which is, I guess, not bad. I think it's worth it to save this guy. I think it's worth it to save this guy. Problem is, if he has another it that stairs, we just fall next turn, right? Ooh, that's actually risky. If he has the second it that stairs, we just lose, right? Because we don't have a heal. This survives, at least. This survives. Okay. The Sunblast Bigger is huge. He's gonna. He probably has very nice. That's what he's looking to do here. I'm gonna let him do it before we commit our perm, perm, our, our Petricide Sound. Because if he doesn't have it, we actually get to draw with Soraka. Yep, that's the very nice that we talked about. But at least we know that he used up his. Uh, that he used up his. First, it does stairs. Question is, does, does he have a second one, right? Now, we even draw the second Soraka. It's actually better to hold the second Soraka back, I think. I think it's actually better to hold the second Soraka back and be able to do the wish. The problem is, if he has another burying ice... He can just do a next turn on, on, on his first initiative. He might be thinking that it's worth it to save the pillar here. Which I think it could be. This is tough. Very nice is such a good card for this deck, man. It's crazy how very nice was not played anywhere. And now it's like 
crazy, right? Decides to entomb this. Wow. Why? Huh. Interesting. Okay, so Soraka goes away anyways. We get the Guiding Touch, which is not bad. Because the Guiding Touch will let, let us level up Soraka. Second Burying Ice will be a little bit annoying. Because we don't have any units, right? So Second Burying Ice only takes us to... Hmm. Uh... So he just tapped out of Second Burying Ice. I like doing this because it means Saraka levels up and then we can do the Guiding Touch to be able to draw two cards. This is good. Because he's going to heal to fully and he's at 10. He gets another two trigger. Actually, he's at 12 because he's, he, he's, 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 he has gotten three fury triggers. He could have another... Besides to transform. <laughs> okay, I respect it. We still level up Soraka because this thing gets all the way healed up. So we still get access to the Guiding Touch as we need to. We'll probably just take that 8 damage from this guy. And that's what he got from the Ferris Financier, right? Yeah, I think we're okay taking the 8 damage. I think what I'm going to have to do... He's healed right now, though. We get another. We could also just potentially try to kill this. I don't think he's... I'm going to always... I think I'm going to always uh, drag... Heal this with Soraka next turn. So we can do like this. Oh, perfect. We get the Star Spring. And we get the Bad Bad, Bad, Bad Protector. So now he needs to be worried about the Star Spring win condition. So we're going to get a lot of heal here. It's very likely that that, that, that Starspin is going to get really high really early. He needs to block pretty much everything next turn, right? Because everything that we're doing is going to be huge damage. This goes to 9, allowing us to drag this guy. We attack with everything else. Uh, we can even just pull this right here. Or we can just... I mean, I think it's better to pull it like this because... I don't want him to get I don't want him to block any of my other guys with the ice pillar. So I think it's fine doing it like this. We go to nine. Again, problem is gonna be very nice. Right? So yeah, yeah, here he goes down to one HP. We clear his whole board, so even if he has burying ice, it's gonna be kinda tough for him to get there. He has two ways to drag like really big units. If he gets thrown out, it's gonna be a little bit annoying. We do have the Astro Protection to save something. Freezes don't do it, so he needs to... Ooh. I don't think that's it. And now we even have single combat. So we have, we're at 10. We're still doing a lot of damage here. This is going to take us all the way up to 14. We have the Astro Protection. Do we need to save her? Here's a, here's a question. Do we actually need to save the Soraka? I don't think we do. As weird as it sounds, I think we want to save the protection to be able to heal our units and get to our start and win condition. So I think now the way that we win here, because if we try, if we do the Astro Protection on the Soraka, we lose the 4 heal from it. And that 4 heal takes us to 18, right? So there's absolutely no reason for us to do the Astro Protection of Soraka there. Here we can just pass. Like, literally. Because this is going to heal another 4, taking us to 18, and the fall from the Astro will take us to a 22. So this is Strangle. Now, if he pulls if he pulls the Barbar Protector, um, we just win anyways. Here's the question, though. Wait, we know that he plays he, he plays Aftershock. So we should have gone for the win condition here. We should have just healed our our protector right now and gone for the win. Because actually, yeah, this is a misplay. Oh, I'm glad he didn't see it. 
So this was a misplay because the protector was going to die to his own ability. I didn't think that through. I mean, we had left us with only three units to be able to heal up. But this is the game, right? Yeah, this is game because I guess us it's actually 22. And GG is, wow. At the end there, if he passed back, when we passed there, he actually could have just won because we would have ran out of units because our protector would have died healing our nexus. So we would have healed four, protector dies healing the nexus. I, I guess actually we're, we're having the same thing because then we just do the Astro Protection next turn. So it wasn't a misplay because if he passed back, we still hitting four, taking us to uh, the 18. And then next turn, we just do the Astro Protection to open. And that's already lethal. He would need to have another way to kill the, uh, the Star Spring. But we did see that he plays Aftershock. So we took the risk there of, of not just, of, of losing to a second Aftershock. But yeah, GG's. Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope you enjoy those games. As you saw, I think the deck is actually pretty good. I think uh, this is the best version that I have come up with. Uh, I don't. I know it doesn't have great win rates on this on the ladder, but I think it's because people are either not playing this correctly or have cards that I think are bad, um, or are cutting cards that I think are good. Like people are cutting the protector. I've seen people not from Mountain Drake, which I think can put a lot of pressure because this deck is a mix of both. It's a mix of Star Spring, but you're also trying to put a lot of pressure on the opponent by attacking with your big units that they have to block. Otherwise, they start slowly losing damage. So you get a lot of pressure from your Mountain Drake, from your Galio, Browin, and even the Petrocise Hand becoming a really big attacker uh, that you don't get from the Bill Swatter version of this deck. So, so again, I think this deck actually has some pretty good potential. Um, it is a little bit scary though, right? Again, some stuff like direct removal, like vengeance, urination, because of how much you rely on, on buffing up some of your units like the Broadwind, so they can just target and kill it. And opponents can also block in certain ways, as you saw in the Anivia game, so that you never get value from your Star Spring healing up your units, right? Because you're not able to damage your own units. But yeah, so again, hope you enjoy those games. If you enjoy the content, please make sure to subscribe below. It helps us out a lot. I also stream on Twitch about two to three three to four times a week and twitch the tournament and you can also find us on twitter and discord those links are below in the description i hope you enjoyed these games and i'll see you all tomorrow have a good one